So uh, Buzz, one of the tests we want to do is talk about bulk density. You might tell me what is bulk density and why do I care about it? Well, bulk density is a really, really good way to know what your soil structure looks like. Basically, uh, the lower your bulk density, the more pore spaces you have in the soil. So bulk density is basically a specific um, uh, weight, dry weight per unit volume. And so uh, this test, we're gonna look at both soil moisture and we can derive bulk density. Now, old school, is you've got this beveled oh. pipe. You remember this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this sucker, I'll, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. But basically, you've got a known volume, and then you can weigh it. You can dry it and weigh it, dry it to get this moisture, and then you can weigh it and then divide it by the known volume. Now, we've got to use metric units, which can be a challenge. But this is, this is what I like, is this, you actually have a known volume, and we're going to put caps on this. So we have these little caps, which I'll show you in a minute. And the nice thing about it is those caps will then keep the, keep the moisture oh, in. Oh yeah. So okay. we've got a great thing. Now here's what's cool, is you slide this thing in there, and you put it in there. And then Good this on. thing is called a slide hammer, which I'll show you in a minute. So there we go. Uh, it's always good to keep a toothpaste, a toothbrush handy in one of these because uh, as soon as you get any kind of sand in this it can it can gum up the woods oh okay all yeah, right yeah so where we were doing our infiltration test in the wheel track this is where we're going to take our first soil uh, uh, sample okay all right so this is why it's called the slide hammer Ooh. okay so we've got it down there it basically looks at six inches of soil, okay? So we're going to pull it up. And so, um, will you get those caps for me, please? So I went in maybe a little bit deeper than six inches, David. Okay. But here's what's pretty cool. Uh, it really does a nice job of uh, giving us a... a an almost perfect volume. Get us that uh, wrench, please. This is where it can be tricky. So, got your toothbrush, your best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oop, other way around. Okay, so we just hold that. Okay, now let's not embarrass ourselves. Can you see if you can turn that, David? Can you I hope that? we. Yep. You got it? Yep. There we go. Ready. Perfect. There we go. Okay. All right, hold it level for me, please. Okay, so whoop. let's have a look. So you've got this almost perfect. Uh, there we go. Perfect soil sample here. You're going to cap it on this side and cap it, cap it on this side. So this is, uh, if you see, it's WT zero to six. Okay. Got little holes in here to allow some of the air out, but I'm going to take this home out of, to the lab. Okay. I'm going to dry it at 105 degrees Celsius, so that's uh, 220 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. Get rid of all the moisture. We then have a known volume and a known mass. We can calculate moisture and then uh, actual dry weight from this. So what you're telling me is you're basically, you can determine the, the amount of pore, holes or pore space in, this, in that volume of soil. Y yeah, so you, you are assuming a specific, uh, a density of your soil particles, but yes, you can calculate, thanks for reminding me, you can actually calculate pore space on this. So as a uh, farmer, what do farmers do to influence that? Or aren't all soils the same? Well, that's what I always thought. <laughs> so uh, again, you know, you're you're implementing your soil, uh, your your principles of soil health. Uh, minimum disturbance, keep a live root in the soil year round, keep the soil covered, diversity, 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 and incorporate animals. It's a process and it's a system. Okay. But really, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help the farmer take another view at uh, her or his soils. To, uh, to improve these properties, to harvest sunlight and harvest water better.
So here we've got the woods, uh, the, the 0 to 6 inches, and then the woods, the 6 to 12 inches. So let's stick the 0 to 6 inches in. Screw this baby in here. Okay. You want to do the honors, David? Yeah, let me yeah, give it a shot. I'm How old are you now? 63? Six, I'll be 65 and... 65. Well, if, if a 65-year-old can do it, then... Okay, you allow gravity to do it. Don't use too much muscle. Perfect. Okay, good. Now, what's this? One more. Uh, two more. There we go. Perfect. That good enough? Uh, okay, that should be good. Just give me one more. That's it. All right, now, let's see if we can pull it out. Oh, uh, okay, there we go. Just wiggle it a little bit. All right. Okay. And how is this closed again? Oh, I did that coming out here, brother. <laughs> okay. All right. Force a habit. There we go. Put, put the tools away there. Yep. There, there we go. go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So. Oh yeah, that looks good. Uh, oh, we've got it in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I'm, well, I'm assuming it's in there. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's so you can, I mean, if you want it to be really precise, you can level it off with your pocket knife. Or my pocket knife. Where's my pocket knife? So just level that off. Yeah, so yeah. again, I'm I'm a bucket chemist. So I'm not that precise. Okay, put the end cap on. And then we'll do the woods. And what you can also do is you can mark top and bottom if you wanted to. This is my postdoc Gabe, and these are the wheel track and wood samples that Gabe is going to weigh and then put in the oven. We decided to only use the zero to six inch samples because the six to 12 inch samples I didn't take properly. going to put these in the drying oven and he's going to dry them for 24 hours at about 220 degrees. It's been three days since David Lamb and I were out on Jason Carter's farm getting those bulk density samples and then also do, doing the infiltration tests. We took the samples back uh, to the lab, uh, we weighed the sample wet put it in an oven at about 220 degrees and left it there for 24 hours to completely dry it and then we re-weighed. So what we were able to get number one was soil moisture but more importantly then we had a dry weight which we divided by the volume of the sample which we know quite, quite closely. And uh, I also then want to show you how we compared uh, a few of those factors uh, from the wheel track to the woods sample. What you can see here is that we had the wheel track weight 0 to 6 inch and then the woods 0 to 6 inches. We decided not to do the 6 to 12 inch uh, um, sample because I didn't think we did a good enough job of taking those samples. But you can see a, a wet weight of 281 uh, and a dry weight of 259 and a uh, for the woods uh, it the wet and dry weights were slightly lower for both of them. We know that the sample tube is one and three eighth inch ID and six inches long. And if you convert that to cubic centimeters uh, metric units, you get 146 cubic centimeters of the volume. If you have a look at the wheel track sample, we, uh, we took that dry weight, 259 grams, and we knew what the volume of the sample was. It was 146 centimeters. Your bulk density would be 259 divided by 146 
grams which would be 177 grams per cubic centimeter. We do the same here for the uh, the wood sample go through the same procedure and you can see your bulk density of the wood sample is considerably lower it's about 1.6 grams per cubic centimeter um, and then if you go back and calculate pore space this is just a formula you 100 minus, minus bulk density divided by particle t density times 100 well, for this one, our bulk density is 1.77. Our particle density, that's basically of silica sand, we assume is about 2.65 times 100. So, uh, 100 minus 66.7 uh, 66 gives us 33.2%. If we go through the same calculation over here, where we had the wood sample, we had... 40% uh, pore space. So we have a lot more pore space. And uh, what I did was just to compare the wheel track and wood samples. It's interesting where we had the wheel track, our infiltration rate was four inches per hour, which f for that second inch, which frankly for row crop land is pretty good. But look at how much quicker uh, 100 uh, inches an hour for the wood sample, that second inch. So if you remember, it took us less than 37 or th uh, 37 seconds. Our bulk density, a little bit higher or quite a bit higher for the wheel track versus the woods. And then the pore space, again, is much lower. So there's less, there are less air pockets in here. That means less soil structure there than in the woods. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of uh, what we were trying to do out in the field and how you can actually quantify some of those properties uh, on a piece of paper. So we looked at uh, infiltration rates, bulk density, and then also percentage pore space. These are things that are relatively easily measured in the field. You saw some of those calculations and I hope those calculations and the way we did the field work gives you some sort of insight and that you would find it useful for your own application.